So today I'm gonna to be looking at a really cool After Effects tool called Eye Expressions, and this is version three. Now what this allows you to do is harness the power of expressions without having to know programming or coding language. So I've worked on projects in the past where I use expressions, but it's really limited to me watching a tutorial and finding where to plug the expression in. But when it comes time to make any customizations or if I run into any issues that I need to troubleshoot, it's impossible because I don't really understand that coding language. So this is gonna bypass all that and make the process of using expressions very simple. Okay, so I'm inside of my Adobe After Effects project and I have the Eye Expressions panel open over here. Now if I click on this library button, that's going to launch this dialog box and it's going to show me all the different categories of tools that I have here. Now to keep this tutorial at a reasonable length, I'm not going to be showing you everything. So I urge you to take a closer look yourself and see if it has specifically what you want or what you need. There are just a ton of really, really useful things like we have beat detectors, we can mess with cameras, have them automatically focus on layers or points of interest. Obviously, if you want to up our wiggle game, there's a ton of wiggle options. We have directional wiggle, we can make our wiggle loop. We can even animate and do character rigging with this. It's just totally cool, all the different options that this has. Okay, so now I'm going to create something. Now, I've created some infographics in the past, and those required quite a few expressions. So let's see what eye expressions can do. Uh, let's say I, make a, I want to make a pie chart. I'm just going to type in pie in the search bar here, and it gives me this pie slice tool under the path options. So I'm going to click on this, and then down here I can read a description about it. It says, creates a pie shape as needed for pie charts with the arc only option. You can also use it to create arcs of a circle. Very cool. Sounds good. And then just below that, it shows me the parameters of the tool um, and what each one does. So I'm gonna click on OK. Now on the panel, I can see that it launched those here with the parameters. Now I need something to actually apply it to. So I need to make a path. So I'm gonna go down here to the timeline, create new shape layer, and I'm gonna add a path to that, as well as a fill and a stroke. Then I'm gonna go ahead and rename this pie slice. Now I'm going to open up the path and actually select the path because that's what we're applying it to. Then I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And now we can see we have this pie slice. One of the most important things I need to do is click this button here. It says automatically reapply whenever you change something in the expression. So I'm going to click that. Now anytime I adjust any parameters, we're going to see that automatically update. If you have that off, it can get quite confusing. You change something and then it doesn't reflect. So if I look at the parameters here, I have radius, start angle, size, and I have slider bars for each. So I can make adjustments here, that's cool. I can change the start angle. I can make that pie slice larger, and I could only show the arc, but I need to turn off the fill actually. So turn off the fill. And just like any shape layer, I can keep making adjustments to this with my shape layer tools. I can adjust the width, um, change the caps, change the colors, very, very cool. And I can reset these to default values. Now there doesn't look like there's any place to actually keyframe these. Well, I need to create these controllers. So I'm gonna select the layer, and I'm gonna click on radius here, and it says that it can create a radius control for me. So I'm gonna click yes. That adds a slider control right here, slider effect named radius, and everything's linked up. You can see it down here in the timeline as well. And if I adjust it here, now you can see that this is adjusting, and I have that toggle animation. So now this is keyframeable. You can see over here this changed as well. I have a couple of ad additional parameters to adjust. And I'm gonna go ahead and add start angle and size. So now I have all these slider bars, and I can quickly animate this pie slice. So for this, I'm just gonna add keyframes on all these assets here, and I'm gonna bring them all down to zero. And if I hit the U key on my layer in the timeline, that'll bring, you know, just show me what's keyframed. So right now they're all set to zero. Now let's go to like the two second mark, and we'll bring these back up. Uh, let's say we want the size, we want the radius to go up to 300, and then we want the size to be at 315, whereas obviously 360 is the full amount. Um, and then let's say the start angle goes from zero to, let's have that spin all the way around too, like 360. Maybe not 360, but like 320. Okay, now that really flies in, but let's go ahead and add some Bezier to these keyframes. I just selected F9 there. Now I'm gonna hit up the graph editor, 
and just quickly add a speed adjustment here. And now that should be looking pretty nice. Okay, and also I wanna turn off the stroke and change the color to maybe like a blue. There we go. So now you can see how quickly I designed that animation. Very, very simple. Now let's add a text element. I'm hit Control or Command T and then type 100 in here. Now let's say we want this text element to be driven by the, by the pie slice. So we want it to go from 0% all the way up to 100 or let's say this is like 80% or whatever this is. So let's go to the library and see if we can find something. So I have the source text here. There's a counter section and then I have counter numbers. So I'm gonna select that and you can see all the parameters I've got here. I can apply it to something and then I can need to connect it to a slider. So we want, or I want the size here, since this goes from zero to 360, I want that to drive this from zero to 100. So what we can do here is I'm gonna connect this slider and then I'm gonna go back to the source text and I'm gonna apply it here. And then I'm gonna hit this automatically reapply button. So now it goes from zero to 315 um, but we want it to go between 0 and 100. So 360 is going to equal 100. Um, so how can we do this? Well, first, let's get rid of these decimal places. So that's quite simple. I'm just going to hit 0. Now here we have a multiply slider value with. So essentially, what I can do here is I can open up my calculator, and we just need to divide. We need to take 100 and divide it by 360, and that will give us our magic number. So 0 0.27. So what we need to multiply this is by, I'm gonna go ahead and round this up and multiply it by 0 0.28. So 0.28, I'm gonna hit enter, and now I have my numbers. So that's 88. So it goes from zero to 88. Now let's say we want this to say, uh, this one, we want this to be like a percentage. So we can go to surrounding text, and I can hit this little box, text after, and then I can just plug in the percent symbol, and now we've got this cool animation. Totally driven, the text is driven here, a bunch of expressions. If I had tried to create this um, from scratch, it would have taken me a long time. If I, would, if I would have tried to create this from scratch, it would have taken a long time, been a big fat headache, and having all these options would have been next to impossible with my skill set. All right, I wanna give you another quick example. Let's say I'm working on a map animation and I have a map element here of this airplane. Let's say it's gonna be flying across our map and I wanna have a call out title. So I want a little animated path to go from my text to the airplane as it's animating and kind of stick to that airplane. So this is really easy with eye expressions. So what I can do is go to library and over here select path, create, and here it says connect two layers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay. It's gonna launch in the panel. Now, I'm gonna connect these layers. So first layer, I'm gonna grab the text element, hit connect, and then I'm gonna grab, grab the airplane and hit connect. And now I need a path to apply it to. So I'm gonna hit my pen tool and make sure I'm not on any layer so it's not creating a mask. And then I'm just gonna create a path anywhere. Then I'm gonna select that path and click apply. And that'll automatically attach those two. And now I'm gonna click the automatically reapply button because I'm gonna make some adjustments here. Now, I'm gonna drag this to the bottom. And now that's all good and well, but look how dynamic this is. If I grab the text and move it around, it's sticking. But it's looking a little weird. If we zoom in here, that's because our variant is set to three segments. So I need to, first, well first I need to go back and uh, grab my path and then change that. I'll change it to a straight line and click apply. And there we go. Now, once again, I have this right here. And if I have this animating around, that's gonna automatically stick to that. And I could obviously make this a little bit nicer, put a background on here. And I could even go in here, add a trim paths, and then animate this on, like any other callout would. I animate the end property from zero to 100, and then that path is gonna animate, um, actually, we can uh, flip that if we want. We could have it go from the airplane 
to the text however we want it. And there you go, quick dynamic um, call out path. You know, I've created this before in After Effects and I have to use the beam effect and you have to, you know, link everything up and this is way, way easier. Plus I can quickly change the look of it if I wanna make a, um, well first I need to grab this path again. If I wanna change this to like a curve, two segment curve, three segment curve, very, very cool. Okay, I've got one more really cool thing I want to show you here. So here I have an airplane animation looping. This airplane's flying up, turning around really quickly. So I want to add a trail effect to this, like a little line or path that trails behind it and moves, you know, dynamically with the plane. So for that, I'm going to go to Library, Path, Create, and here we have Trail. It says right here, creates a line that follows the movement of any layer. Very, very cool. Okay, so I'm going to select my airplane. And right here it says attach to layer. I'm going to hit connect. And now I'm going to grab the pen tool. And then I'm just going to draw a quick path. Doesn't matter where it is. And I'm going to rename this trail. You don't have to rename it. Now I'm going to go grab the actual path. And I'm going to apply the trail effect here. Okay, first I'm going to put it beneath here. Now let's take a look at this animation. Okay, it's definitely trailing behind it, but it does this little weird wobble thing. So what I wanna do here is make a couple of quick adjustments. I can turn up the number of points to make that a bit sturdier. So that won't wobble. Now I can turn the duration down a little bit to make sure that stays with our plane. Okay, now I've got it the way that I like it. I can go down to the actual stroke and make adjustments. Can make that a round cap and even turn it into dashes. Let's turn the dashes down some or up. Now I'm just gonna turn the opacity down. There we go, now we've got a cool little trail. All right, so there you have it. I'm only scratching the surface naturally of what you can do, what the capabilities of this product are. And if you do decide you wanna purchase the product, please use my affiliate links down in the video description. It really helps out a lot. It would be much appreciated. And as always, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.